What's good, VGC Nation? It's your boy Flo, and we're here with week two of the Holy Grail War. Um, this week we will be versing Berserker. Um, Berserker is a crazy, crazy strong, talented opponent that we got this week, and they have a mean roster to, to go against. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm gonna go through their skills real quick and let y'all know what the, what they have, what they do, and what they can do to me, uh, potentially. Uh, first though we have their first skill which is their passive skill basically allows them to draft four additional pokemon at the start of the round um at the start of the draft well at the end of the draft but at the start of the first round it allows them to draft four additional pokemon to their team making it about i think a total of 12 right um and yeah they they basically get extra pokemon compared to the rest of us that get normally eight and in if if they lose a match, so th this is the catch, right? If they lose a match, Berserker um, has to kill off one of their Pokemons. And um, that Pokemon will no longer be allowed inside the tournament um, unless Avenger gets them. But we'll talk about that later <laughs> down the road. And the only person that can revive Pokemon from the graveyard is Revenger. I mean, a Revenger. Avenger is Avenger. But anyways, um, their second skill... Their second skill is basically um they force if they lose a match they force they can redo the match technically they you can basically um let's say in the in the the playoffs after the uh round robin in the playoffs you do a best two out of three right and let's say they lose that two out of three uh they can redo the match and it can only be one match it'll be only one match and if they win that match then they win the whole thing. They win the whole round, and you get put out of the tournament. So, yeah, it's a pretty strong second ability. Like, <laughs> let's say they can use that for scouting. Let's say um, during round robin, uh, he could easily just lose to me and then be like, oh, well, you're running that. Well, rematch me now. I'm using my second skill. And, ah, that, that shit would suck. That would suck. <laughs> that would really, really suck. Like, oh, shit, Scarf. Um... Sincino called me off guard, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's a that's a clutch ability. Anyways, the third ability, the final ability. Um before the match, Berserker is can roll a generated number. And depending on that number, uh I I would have to lose a Pokemon, right? If if it's a if it's a certain number, it would force me to drop a po Pokemon from the match and make it in like a 5Z6 or um nothing happens it just depends on the role and and yeah that's his abilities but anyways let's get into his team and then we're gonna get into my team and what i'll be bringing to the, this week's match all right so now first up we have clefable he he is running clefable um it, it's a fucking threat <laughs> like What's crazy is I was we were discussing what we were drafting before before the tournament. I was discussing with a couple of friends, um, and we we ended up talking about Clefable, and I was bringing up how I wanted to draft Clefable if I make it playoffs, and um, he basically was like, "Hey, I kind of wanted Clefable too," and then ended up drafting. And I was like, "Fuck," but but yeah. Anyways, that uh, Clefable is a huge threat. It can run things like Cosmic Power. Um, it has Unaware. You know I love my Unaware months. It can also uh, hit you with the Magic Guard. Not being able to be toxic is a problem. Just it can do anything it wants for real. Run it. You can run knockoff sets with physical. You can run some some Charge Beam, Cosmic Power, Moonlight, Softball. It, the sky's the limit with Clefable. I love Clefable. It's it's a niche. It has a huge niche in the OU tier currently. For me, personally, it does. And it, it's just an amazing Pokemon all around. Well-rounded well -rounded Pokemon in general. And then next up, we have... All right, so next up, we have Cinerace. Cinerace, um, it, it might come. Uh, if it does come, I expect heavy-duty boots. I expect it to run Pyro Ball. Just, just the normal standard stuff. It might carry Sucker. Um, it might have Gunk Shot. Which is very scary for me. Uh, if it is, if it runs an offensive set, it might be very scary. I'm also very scared of the potential Willow, which would be very nice if you brought that. Um, I I wouldn't be expecting it, but 
I mean, I clearly am, but <laughs> but still, it would be something to cripple my team a little bit running uh, Will O Wisp. And, and yeah, Senrace is a, it's a fast ass Pokemon. Uh, it's probably faster than the majority of my team um, that y'all know of, right? Um, it's faster than the majority of my team that y'all know of. I I don't really have much else to say about Senrace. It's it's, it's a threat. Let's just leave it at that. It's 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 a threat. And next up after Incinerators, we have okay, so we have Iron Boulder. Now, Iron Boulder, I really don't expect him to bring it because I have done Dozo the King himself and uh, in fact Joe himself. I just I just don't see it coming. It, he might bring it, which he might run the special set. I've seen some special set uh iron boulders and like things like Poke Games League with, with the meteor beam sets and shit like that, but I just I don't see it coming. I've I've ran across a lot of iron boulders in other drafts and they brought them, but at the end of the day, it's just a, a crippling thing to do when you're versing a Dundozo on the other team. I don't I don't know I don't know why they do it, but they do it. Um, iron boulder isn't that big of a threat, but it is fast as fuck, and that's probably the the most threatening thing about it. But he already kind of outdoes me in speed with his team in general um and bulk too I, I will give him that his team is pretty fast and pretty bulky um but next up we have so next up we have drachi this thing right here is just scaring the hell out of me um i didn't do any mocks for this match so <laughs> i'm i'm kind of terrified of this because i don't know how my team's gonna um fare against drachi uh, he drachi's just like clefable but with Still typing, still in psychic typing, and that means it gets stabbed, stored power. And oh, we're gonna hate that. If it runs stored power, I'm gonna be miserable. <laughs> I'm gonna be so fucking miserable. Uh, it also can run something like Stoof Rocks, it can also can run something like Thunder Wave, uh, uh, Scarf. I'm, I'm really expecting that Scarf Trick. Scarf Trick is probably the most I would expect from Jirachi. Maybe you turn with it, an Iron Head, of course, for the flinches. Um, but yeah, it can do a lot of things that just terrifies, terrorizes my team in general. And yeah, uh, that's it for Drachi. Next up, we have High Dragon. Now, High Dragon, I don't know how I'm gonna beat this thing. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna beat High Dragon, but I'm gonna find a way, right? Uh, I think my best play is Lapras, but we will see if he brings it or not, because uh, I don't, I don't have that great of Mons to. Take a Draco Meteor. I think the best I got is uh my fairy type who's immune to it. But then after that, he might have Flash Cannon. And and yeah, we seen we seen him last week use Flash Cannon to get to uh what, what's some things what's that thing called? <laughs> uh oh shit. Diancy. Yeah, Diancy. And he got nuked with nasty uh, flash cannon. Yeah. I don't want my fairy type to experience that <laughs> and be miserable. It would be terrible. Um, but yeah, High Dragon, it probably will come with something like Dark Pulse, Draco. Uh, it might, it might be Specs. He might run Specs, but then again, he could run Substitute Nasty Plot Set, uh, and then just run Draco and Dark Pulse. That that's threatening enough to me, because I really don't have nothing to handle that <laughs> at all. Um, but yeah. Next up after High Dragon, we got so we got Clodzire. Clodzire, um. It, it might come. <laughs> it might come. I don't really see it being the biggest threat to my team, but it might come and be a little little issue, a little annoying. I will give it that. Uh, Clausire probably run Toxic. Liquidation, I expect, because if it, if it does come, I expect it to run Liquidation because Goldingo would easily wall it with a balloon if it if it doesn't run Liquidation. Like, if he, if he doesn't run Liquidation, he's just fucked, right? That at least that's how I'm looking at it. He might just be full blown hazard stack, and then you know, because he got court change. And if I try to get rid of it, anyways, anyways, yeah, clouds are it. I don't expect it to come, but if it does come, it might be a little annoying. But I feel like we can overcome that. And, and next up, after clouds are we got okay, we got arachne, arachnid, whatever you want to call them. Um, this thing is threatening, life threatening to my team. <laughs> <laughs> Sticky wells is an issue because I mean I'm pretty I'm already pretty slow but this thing just coming in general is um kind of threatening to my team 
with liquidation lines. It it might try to stall me in some type of way. Um, with Claude Zire paired up, it might try to stall me. Uh, a lot. I got water absorbed water absorbed to handle it but at the same time lapras isn't the best water absorbed mod to take on arachne because it can come back with a, a bug type move that would just nuke me like arachne is very fucking strong out of like it's physical to, physical attack is crazy like <laughs> crazy um but yeah arachne comes i'm expecting sticky wells i'm expecting something around like egg scissors lunge or something liquidation and then maybe cussed out. I, I've seen a cussed out barrier um arachnid in, in an old draft, and that shit terrified me because it nuked my team and yeah, yeah. <laughs> Arachnid's threatening. I'll give it that. Uh next up after Arachne, we got all right. So we got Serena. Serena, I, I don't think it's that threatening to my team, especially with Godingo. I think the most threatening thing it could go for is knockoff. Um, I also have Tower Flame on my on my side, so I mean, I don't expect this to come, but, but he might bring it. Uh, Serena, it, it it can't really do much to my team. Maybe it catches my, maybe it runs Scarf to catch my uh, Lapras off guard, or I, I would never stay in with Lapras anyways. I would never stay in with Dundozo. I would never stay in with uh, Sendaconda. So I don't know. If he brings Serena, I, I mean, that's cool, but I really wouldn't expect him to bring Serena because... My team does too well against it. It really does. Even uh, Pheasantipity, or what's her name? Pheasant, I think it's Pheasantipity. She does really good against it too. So, yeah. Um, next up after Serena. All right. So, next up is Incineroar. Incineroar. Now, this thing I clearly see coming. I, I expect it to come. I expect it to run knockoff, flare blitz, flame charge, some shit, trailblaze, just some setup variant. It could even run power trip. I'm pretty sure it can run power trip. Um, I, I, it, it could be threatening as hell with parting shot. It's going to be annoying as fuck if it does run parting shot. Just overall, this Pokemon is going to be a nuisance to my team. Um, it cripples Goldingo with, um, being able to go for make it rain or shadow ball. Just both of his stabs just nullified. Excuse me. Both of his stabs is nullified by this Pokemon. And yeah, I, I just I have to figure out a way to play around it. Hopefully I do well at um at doing that. And if I do, we have a high chance of winning this game. I, I will say that. If I can get around Incineroar, we have a very, very high chance of winning this game. And next up after Incineroar, we have Minior. Okay, so Minior, he could run Minior and just run the special set uh to try to get rid of Dundozo or or some shit like that. Uh it's kind of a last ditch effort. Some people are hesitant to bring it against a mon like Dundozo, but um, my my opponent might do that. Always be prepared for anything, right? <laughs> Always be prepared. Uh, that's the only thing I can expect: the Focus Sash, Shell Smash set, Power Gym, Earth Power, Acrobatics, just things of that nature. That's really all I can expect. We don't have terrestrialization, so I wouldn't expect like some magical gra grass move or electric move out of the blue you know what i'm saying um yeah if it does come it won't be a threat to me like i won't be screaming hollering worried about it but if i lose dundozo then i probably would probably would yeah 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 but nah 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 he ain't gonna break it. he he can't break it. he can't break it come on now <laughs> if he does though we'll be ready for it uh next up after mini or we got so quillfish um last week after uh berserker lost he had to get rid of uh, Quillfish, unfortunately. So Quillfish is officially in the graveyard. None of us can touch it. Um, may you rest in peace, little homie. And last but not least, his last Pokemon, the Pokemon I cannot name for the life, life of me. It looks like some tree, some pine cone, pine top. I don't know, uh, Arbolovia, Arbolivia. Uh, that's the best I can do with <laughs> it. This thing, it, it might come. I versed this last year again when he had uh, it had drafted it, and it did pretty decent. It run, it could run some things like Earth Power, Elite Seed. Uh, I, I forgot some other moves for it, but yeah, pretty sure Earth Power Elite Seed is probably the most annoying set it could bring. Um, it does get that. Um, uh, I forgot what the ability is called, but it basically sets up grassy terrain when hit by a physical move. Um, that 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 would be pretty dope to see. Maybe it get help. Um, maybe it could help Jirachi set up with like a uh a grassy seed 
or something like that, um, boosting his physical defense, that would be kind of terrifying. <laughs> Not going to lie to y'all. Uh, Drachi's very scary here. Very, very scary here. But yeah, um, that's my opponent's team. Um, and next up, we got my team. But first, I want to let y'all know what just what happened this week. So basically, this week we ended up drafting two new mods to the team with um because we came across two command seals, and uh yeah, we got Dark Rot and Thunderous T. And and now I'm gonna get straight to the the team that I'll be bringing for um this week's match. All right, so first up this week for me is Godingo. I'm pretty sure y'all expected this, but anyways, uh, it's Godingo. We're running modest set, um, two fifty two in HP from that bulky modest special attacker. Um, four in special defense, two fifty two in special attack. Um, the moves that we're running is Hex Recover, Psy Shock, Thunder Wave. Uh, Psy Shock is clearly for the Claude's eye to see if it's physical defensive or special defensive. See if I can nuke it. Uh, if I can't, then we're going to try to play around it. Um, then item is clearly Air Balloon. So I can wall that Claude's eye if he does bring it. Because Claude's eye wouldn't be able to do nothing to me. That's why I said it probably will have to bring Liquidation. But yeah, um, Goldingo also is going to come in. And like if, if that does happen, let's say he does bring Claude. Um, and Clyde can't touch me, I could just T-Wave at it, and it will be forced to switch out into something that I can T-Wave, because he has no electric type on his team. His only ground type is Clyde's Iron. So T-Wave, once Clyde's Iron is sits in and just sees he can't touch Goldingo, T-Wave is free. It's a freebie. So Hex with T-Wave is the key here. Um, and yeah, next up we got... So next up we have Sensino. Um, with the skill link ability, we're running adamant this week. Um, with the 252 attack, four special defense, and 252 in speed, we're basically running max speed. I think it's 329, and then um, what's the Pokemon name? High Dragon. I think max speed is 324. So we we do still out speed. I, I wanted to keep the speed EVs just in case. Um, Jirachi, I'm pretty sure Jirachi's is at 328. And um, I'm running Triple Axle, Tail Slap, Rock Blast, U-Turn. I, I was going to run Bullet Seed or Knockoff, but I don't think I'm going to keep Sensino in if if it ends up going seeing a Jirachi on the team. I don't think I'm going to keep him in. Um, but with Choice Band, we're running the Choice Band item. And with that, we are able to nuke like the majority of his team. I want to say with Tail Slap and Rock Blast by alone, just nukes in the majority of this team. Even Iron Boulder takes like 70% from Rock Blast. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's fucking crazy, right? Um, Incineroar takes like 70% from Rock Blast with the Intimidate. Like, <laughs> if without the Intimidate, oh, we we basically kill. We have a like a, I think we have like a 51% chance of killing Incineroar even if it's max defense um with Rock Blast. Uh Minior we KO Clodzire will have to triple axle or tail slap. I'm, I forgot how much tail slap does to him. Um uh Cle Cle Fable, I'm pretty sure tail slap was to play but Rock Blast does like 50 to 60 as well. If it's not if it's not physically defensive, Incineroar and nukes. If he brings Incineroar in on a rock blast, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. <laughs> Incinerase will also get nuked. Um and yeah, I think I think everything else gets oh, um Arachne as well gets nuked by rock blast. So yeah, yeah. His team's very rock weak. I just I just started noticing that. It was very, very, very rock weak. Var rock and dark would probably be his downfall and fighting. But anyways, next up we got. All right, so next up we have Talonflame. Of course, we're bringing Talonflame. We uh, like, uh, like we need him. He he does great here. Anyways, his uh he's running the Flame Body ability, of course, with Nature being impish this time. Um, the, his EV spray will be two fifty two in HP, two fifty two in defense, and four in attack. Yes, he's max defensive, and he's running the Will O Wisp. He's running Roost. He's running Defog and Acrobatics and with the Heavy Duty Boots. Now, uh, why I brought Acrobatics? Because, like, he has, like, three Muns that spam knock off the majority of the time. Yeah. Clef spells knock off. Um, Incineroar spells knock off. And then 
uh, Serena Spanos knockoff. He's going to bring at least one of them motherfuckers to spam this goddamn knockoff. But anyways, um, um, I'm running max defense simply because there's a potential chance that uh, in center race, in center ace, center race can be life orb and run the gunk shot and that nukes Talonflame greatly. Like it, it fucks Talonflame up. And so we we need to like as much physical defense as possible to eat those hits. Hopefully he'll get a few misses here and there, and we could probably roost up uh, and make this game a, a game changer. But yeah, uh, next up at the center, I mean next up at the town flame we got after town flame we got Lapras. Lapras we're running with the water absorbability, uh, calm mind. We're running two thirty six in HP, two fifty two in special defense, and twenty in speed. Um, now, there's a specific reason why we have 20 in speed. We're running the 20 additional points in speed because Clefable and um, Lapras speed tie at a base 60. And we want to make sure that we're a little bit faster than max defensive Clef, okay? Um, and why? Because we're running things like Haze, Alorn Voice, Protect, and Psychic Noise. So Psychic Noise is always better with a mon that's faster. Um, it kind of sucks <laughs> when you're slower than the thing you're trying to psychic noise. I learned that the hard way when, um, yeah, well, y'all have probably seen me pl play Lapras before and be slower and try to go for psychic noise and they can just roost up at the end of the turn because noise has ended and it can heal now. Yeah. But anyways, anyways, um, yeah, Haze, a lower voice protects psychic noise, um, basically to stop Clef or Jirachi from setting up too greatly with uh cosmic power or store and just keeping them from doing the sword power shit I i'm gonna be terrified of that and that's what i'm worried about the most in this match um the item that we're running we're running leftovers clearly um just get as much recovery off with the leftovers protect style and yeah uh jirachi is gonna be our special defensive monstrosity i mean i said jirachi lapras is gonna be our special defensive monstrosity hope hopefully she puts in that work Next up at the Lapras, we got, got Dundozo. So, yes, we're running two water types this week. I love my water types, and I clearly love Dundozo, a.k.a. Fat Joe. Um, he is running the unaware ability with a careful nature. You know what? I probably should run him with his other ability. ability. I think it's like Oblivious or something. But no, no, no. We're going to keep it simple. Uh, unaware, careful nature. EV spread is 252 in HP, 252 in special defense, and 4 in attack. Now, this, this is because he's probably going to be my main answer to um, Hydreigon if if it comes. He's also going to be my main answer to things like um, special incineror, incinerace or special um, iron boulder. That's what I'm kind of expecting if he brings iron boulder. I'm expecting it to be like special variant and I want him to be able to eat them hits pretty good. So that's why we're doing max special defense here. Um, he's running the liquidation, protect, rest, and crunch. Um, rest is just for the simple fact that Clydesire might come in and try to stall with toxic. And I want him to be able to recover and not be toxic stalled here. Like that's going to be so annoying. I hate stall, y'all. I hate stall. But anyways, um, and yeah, leftovers for the leftover protect style, crunch, uh was for the jirachi because i'm terrified of jirachi and, and yeah <laughs> basically just for the defense I, I probably should put something like body press on there but i'm really worried about the toxic stall i'm really worried about jirachi just setting up on me and yeah yeah uh next up after jirachi i mean next up after dundozo is okay so this is our last month the week and it is our boy dark cry dark cry just running the bad dreams ability his only ability <laughs> with the nature timid his evs are going to be 252 in special attack 252 in speed and four in special defense just max out that speed max out that uh special attack um i probably should lower the uh speed evs um down a little bit to give him a little bit of bulk but I'm not even going to worry about that this week because, I, like I said, I didn't mock to really see what does what or how does how what treats what. But, yeah, um, I'm really glad that we got those command seals and was able to draft him because he, he gives me a little a little relief when it comes to that store power Jirachi or store power club because we can run things like this, like Trick, Dark Pulse, Psyshock, Ice Beam with the Choice Scarf. 
And this might come in clutch when we run into a situation with Jirachi just calm minding up or uh whatever. <laughs> just just being annoying. Just being annoying as shit. Including Clef. If Clef gets too greedy and starts calm minding up like crazy or cosmic powering up like crazy, we can trick that as well. And yeah, that that is my team for the week, y'all. Let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. And we're about to get into the match in a second. So we're back. And I just want to tell y'all right now, I made the biggest mistake of my life. Um, yes, we're about to verse Berserker right now. But um, this is basically like a recap video. Um, this is uh basically just me. I pre -rec I recorded the match itself, but my mic went out. And so now we're watching like uh the, the recording of the the muted video. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, um all the commentary that I was given during the match isn't gonna be able to be played. So we basically just have to watch the um the recording or, or the aftermath of what happened. I think I uploaded the uh the live link here and was basically just because of playing on their team. Uh I think Berserker brought a really good team, a really good matchup against me. I think the only one that they didn't bring was Jirachi that I expected them to bring, who was really good against me, and um, that I really struggled against. Yeah, that that was me playing the uh the music, um, sit back and chill. But yeah, <clears throat> I think the biggest threat on the team was uh, is the biggest threat overall from the from the recap will probably be in, uh, incinerates and you'll see right and you'll definitely see why <laughs> um the most annoying man on their team is probably Claude Dyer. uh and i think everything else was pretty easy to deal with uh incinerates and high dragon was probably the biggest threat for me as far as like uh challenging to get around because i don't have that much power to get around both of them you well, I don't have that much uh, switch-ins to get around both of them at the same time. Uh, anyways, Incinerace. I mean, I said Incinerace. Incineroar, uh, I led with Sincino. A Rock Blast does like 70% to this thing. But he hit me with a Fake Out. And I, I kind of didn't plan for Fake Out. I expected him to go for Part and Shot here early on or Willow. Or Knock Off, just straight up Knock Off. And um, I wanted him to Knock Off Talonflame because I had Acrobatics on it. Um, if y'all seen the preview. But he just straight up parted shots. That's what I was expecting. But <laughs> he went for his second turn. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I, was, I was really expecting a knockoff there. That, that's what I was hoping for. Um, I think he brings in the high dragon or Claude's eye. I, it might be a Claude's eye that he brings in. It was a high dragon or Claude's eye that comes in here. Let's see. Let's see. Claude's eye. Clausar comes in. Now, this Clausar is different, but I knew I didn't want it to Willow this early, so my Goldingo wasn't terrified of, like, onesie wanting it. And, yeah, he, he put up the T-Spikes. Now, here, right here, I'm pretty sure I should have defog. Or do I defog? I thought I, I thought I switched out. I think I switched out. I switched out. I should have defogged here, though. Like, I definitely should have defogged there and then um made a play. Here, I probably should have just went for the Thunder Wave while I could. Um, because them T-Spikes are annoying as fuck. That's why I say Clodzire was the most annoying for my team. Like, just devastatingly annoying as fuck. And I'm glad I brought Side Shot for him, but I wish I would have brought uh, Make It Rain for High Dragon. I'm pretty happy that I brought T-Wave. But, uh, yeah. I, I think this play... When do I make the play and get hit by Dark Pulse? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I think I think my switching was Fat Joe because I put rest on him. I think it was Fat Joe. I think he just goes for the normal dark pulse here. And I didn't want um backyard again to get hit with the uh, the T spice because it was gonna one z one Clef, and I was pretty certain that he was gonna bring set up Clef because that also put in some work against my team, especially with me not having make it rain. Dundozo eats that shit up for breakfast. Oh my goodness. Special defense of Dundozo is the fucking champ. The fucking truth. Um, Dundozo comes in. I, I think I rest here. Uh, did 28%. I should have brought body press. Because look at his team. Liquidation and body press puts it at work. I was more worried about... Uh, I was more worried about Jirachi. And I brought Crunch. But yeah, I should have brought body press. 
Clef came in. I didn't want Clef to get too far ahead. So I'm pretty sure I uh I tried to get this defog out the way. I think that's what my thought process was. Just remove the defog. He brought Encore Clef, and that threw me for a loop. I was like, wow, I haven't seen Encore Clef like in a minute. Like what what Gen 4, Gen 5 or some shit? Oh no. Encore Clef was wild to me. But um I mean, it, it wasn't a terrible brain. It was actually pretty good because he beat he could beat my um my Lapras one on one with it, basically with uh Encore. So I go for the Defog, uh, bring in Lapras. He brings in this. I go for the Protect just to kind of like see what his plan is. Maybe he just fake outs again. I was really hoping he clicks knockoff though this game. Like, <laughs> yo, I was I was begging for it, begging for the knockoff. I think here I go for the haze. God, this was a play for me. This was a beautiful play for me. I go for the haze to remove the um the uh attack drops. <laughs> I think as he brings in lap uh clef, right? I think he brings in clef here. Let's see, let's see. I think I really think it was clef. I'm I'm looking at clef like, yeah, he's gonna bring in clef. And, and I specifically made the EVs, the speed EVs, you know, to be fast and clef, uh, no, no speed. I mean, uh, it wasn't minimal speed. Yeah, yeah, that, that play right, oh, that play to me was so sexy, I'm sorry. But anyways, this is basically was the game plan to go for Psychic Noise. He thought he was faster, but I'm pretty sure it was a speed top. I didn't put speed EVs into him, and I think I just sat here and, uh, I should have went out in the dark ride. That was probably the play. But I didn't want him to go out in the high dragon and just Draco dark ride. I didn't want that to happen. Um he show he reveals well, he revealed the Thunderbolt, but to me it just seemed like that was like the only move he had. <laughs> it was Thunderbolt. And I'm just gonna keep spamming psychic noise. Then he uh hits me with the calm mind, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> fuck. Maybe I'm not ready for this because the encore locks me in the shit like haze. And if he predicts me correctly, he could lock me into just spamming haze and just T bolt the fuck out of me. So, yeah, the, the situation was kind of bad. I was like, ah, oh, shit, I might get fucked by this club. That's why I was like kind of hesitant to go for the uh, the haze here. Uh, I went for I'm pretty sure I went for psychic noise again. I, I just wanted to get him as low as possible. That way I could uh, keep him down there. And not allow him to sweep my team with Clef. Because Clef will fuck you up. Like, you let Clef get a, a plus three. <laughs> and have stored power in the back or some shit. And it's over with. Like, just OV. Especially if it's um uh, defensive build impish nature. Or something like that. Is it impish? It's bold. It's bold. Bold nature. Bold nature Clef, man. Fucking miserable. I forgot when uh, Clef was going rampant. What generation was that? Like Gen Six, I think that was when Acro uh, Acrobatics Talonflame was a thing. With the uh, what uh, what what's this what's this super, uh, sp other move? Gailing. I think that's when Clef was going rampant back then. Like when Megas were first shown, you could like just calm out, spam with Clef, and go crazy with Unaware or Magic Guard. Toxic Star was huge back then. Especially with Slow Mega Slow Bro got introduced. Oh my god. That was a thing. I think uh here I was just trying to determine do I want to sack him because Backyard again was really good against High Dragon. But not at this low. Like not being this low he was, but I really wanted to see if he was. I think here I was about to see the damage calc. And I think I changed my mind. I think I changed my mind and just said, fuck it. Did I protect here? Or did I risk? Or did I just go for haze? See, at, at any point, he could have just uncored me and had me stuck to doing what I was doing with the uh, psychic noise. And he just could have just kept calm minding up. You know what I'm saying? And that would have kind of fucked me too. But in the long run, I think I still came out with Cicino. And just like bullet seed, tail slap, or some shit, and got rid of him. Cause the Clef at this range dies to Cicino. And that's why I was trying to like predict should I switch now? 
Should I switch on the Cicino? Should I haze then make the switch? Because he might try the morning sun. Yeah, I, I was I was thinking pretty hard here. He had me on the ropes with this. With the, just I think he just had T bolt. I think it was uh Encore, Common, T bolt, and Moonlight or something like that. And I was just like, no moon blast? That that's kind of wild to me. You know what I'm saying? And and it's kind of kind of what scared me a lot. It scared it scared me a hell of a lot, to be honest with y'all. Here I just brought in uh what did I bring in? I did bring in Cecino. Did I just triple axle here? I think I just triple axled here. Or did I go for the tail slap? The best play was probably tail slap if I if I did go for it. Oh no, no. I think I went for rock blast. I think I went for rock blast. Because rock blast killed um whatever came in. Or killed in center if it came in. I think tail slap I had another turn and he got the fake out again. Yeah, yeah. Choice Bandit, Skill Link, Rock Blast. Oh my goodness. This shit nuked. I think I think I really could have played Cicino better now that I'm looking at it. I could have played him a lot better. Uh, especially if I would have figured out what I ha what this nigga was. Uh, <laughs> Cinerace, who is a fucking threat. I'm over here thinking, yeah, I, I got this shit in the bag. But check out this damage he about to do to me. <laughs> check out this fucking damage, y'all. I, I swear to you. I was terrified when I seen this damage. And I really, really like it. Everything in me wanted to just click Rock Blast again. But I'm just like, no. Cinerace, uh, he's probably just going to go straight up for the move. Um, did I change my mind? Yeah, I changed my mind and go out into Don Dozo, huh? That first miss was unfortunate. And that actually is very important here. Because that, that also helps the game. Uh, but... I was hoping for a wake up. I forgot I, how many turns I wasted rest. I think that was the first. Pretty sure that was the first turn of rest that was wasted. Switch out into T Flame. He brings out High Dragon. I'm like, <laughs> T Flame is not living none of that shit. <laughs> T, T Flame is not living nothing. Let, let's switch out. At this point, the way he was playing High Dragon, I already figured that he was either. Actually, I pretty much figured that he was Scarf because Specs would have did more to Dundozo. And uh, yeah, so I make the play in the Dundozo, hoping that I uh, wake up soon. I'm like, I should I waste another turn because he's just gonna switch out again. Uh, and yeah, I probably should have wasted another turn here. I hope I did. I really, really hope I did. I think I made the switch though to Cincino, which was crazy. I'm I'm so lost on why he went out in the center race here. That shit threw me for a loop. I was like, center race on the, the off chance that I wake up. Not that turn, but if I stayed in, I wasted a turn, and then the next turn, I woke up to kill the center race. But when he showed this high jump kick and how much damage it did, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, that shit, that shit said a lot. And really, he was really doing good at outplaying what I was thinking. And I was like, oh, man, I'm on the ropes here. Um, so I just had to make a play. I had to figure out what play I needed to make. And I was like, Goldingo's max HP. Let's see if he can eat this hit. And Gold Dingo, by the luck of me, by the luck, eats that one hit, lands the T-Wave, and then I'm able to switch out in the uh, dark, uh, dark Cry. And um, j just the para, the para was nice too. I don't think the para was uh, game-changing, but here I expect him to go out in the Clod or Clef, and I just wanted to trick that, because now that I know that his Scarfer is gone, crippled, I can, I can just trick and then be faster than every fucking thing else. But clearly from well, the damage that uh, Cinerace did from Fat Joe, uh, I, I knew that Cinerace was fucking banded. They're like, that's clearly banded damage, sir. I don't care how much defense EVs I have on Fat Joe, how little, that, that shit was banded. <laughs> like, bro, <laughs> too fucking banded. And so from here, I'm like, he's just going to recover. Uh, expecting me not to be able to do damage to him so i i had to choose between capri sun and talifun to bring in to get the recovery off uh i was really hoping that he didn't go for the thunderbolt because he would have killed a capri sun and I, yeah I, I think he was just gonna hold on to this cleft so he did hold on to the cleft and oh that was by the luck of me y'all by the luck of me <laughs> like <laughs> i was able to predict that and then this this play was probably the most game changing right here if he would have just T-bolted, he would have probably won this game. Not going to hold y'all. So I was able to recover up. I was able to switch out in the fact Joe, I believe. 
I think I just sag fat Joe. I think I think that's what I do. Yeah, Trailblaze, Trailblaze nuked me, and uh, I bring out Talon Flame to get this roost off because I'm like, oh yeah, we need somebody to handle this center race. This bitch is banded, is going crazy on me, and he still hasn't knocked me off. He has two amazing knockoff Pokemon. And still hasn't hit me with a knockoff. That was crazy to me. Like, wild. He didn't even bring Stiff Rocks. <laughs> like, I, I was really thrown off with this game, man. I was really thrown off. A lot of things that I was expecting he didn't do. And um, some of the things he did, but a lot of things he just outplayed me in as, as far as prep and um, playing. I, I was, like, amazed. I was really impressed. I think I go with a Gildingo here, yeah, because he's Willowed. So I'm like, yeah, I, I, I eat this shit for breakfast at this point. I don't think he think, I don't think he thought he could do something to me, or uh, I could do something to him, because I, I don't think I revealed the side shock yet, but with them double T-spikes, I wanted to switch out and basically uh, get rid of that shit, because no, we're not going to deal with that. I still don't know what other moves uh, Clods are had. Club comes in, and I'm trying to debate, should I should I risk taking the damage, because center race is a fucking problem. <laughs> Some reason is a fucking problem. Uh, here, I think, try to T-Wave, and then he brings out Clauser. I'm like, bro, you you must not know I have side shock. That's something in my head. Like, you must not know. I think I dropped the side shock here and do like 40, 43%. Yeah, 43%. And I'm I'm modest. I'm modest max HP and max special attack. 43% is crazy. I'm so I'm like, yeah, this bitch right here is like max defensive, like physically defensive. <laughs> it has to be max physically defensive i'm um, debating on what i should switch out into i bring in Cecino to kind of like uh probably sack i think i go for the triple axle here and i think i kill serena or does it no 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 you know what i should have did i should have tail slapped here but i really really wanted to get rid of this closet but i think i um that was a misplay on my part yeah that was a huge misplay on my part Huge fucking misplay. I should have tail slapped, but I'm pretty sure that I went for the triple axle. Yeah, yeah. Tail slap was the play here because his only other option was Cinerace or Serena. And I really expect him to go on to Serena and not get rid of his win condition um, between uh, Cinerace and High Dragon. I, I didn't expect him to do that, which it completely threw me off. And I think in my head, I was just like, I have a better answer for Cinerace than I do High Dragon and... Uh, uh yeah that, that was basically thought process triple triple axle for sure killed uh high dragon but uh <laughs> center race on the other hand i just had to switch a, a play to make here i go for the defog and i i just didn't realize that this motherfucker's hitting me hard as hell like <laughs> he's three shotting me with t flame and max bulk i was like yo this bitch is doing too much fucking damage so now i have to sack i played a terrible game y'all played a terrible ass game he gets off another pyro i was like bro this nigga is nuking my ass i think i dark pulls here or i side shot i side shot predicting the uh clouds are to come in he brings in this uh serena i get a crit i think i think that crit was kind of huge but eh, eh. bring in t flame he goes for the play rough that does nothing and then I try to roost up. I was really like, if he would have had knockoff, I think he killed me here. I think if he had knockoff, I think he beats me here, or maybe not, because he went for triple axle and and I get the burn after three turns. So I was like, yeah, yeah, we back in business, y'all. Uh, at this point, I'm trying to count how many pyro balls. I think I was look. I think I was looking for how many pyro balls. What's the name had and like him bringing in high dragon. What my play was. From this point like i i feel like he underplayed high dragon here and if he played high dragon a little more aggressive i just lose i i just straight up lose uh i try to get the t-wave off i really should have just went for hex at this point i should have just went for hex but i really really wanted to catch that center race lacking that was my hope hope and my prayer uh, when he did that, I was just like, yeah, I can hex here and get rid of Serena. I'm I'm, ex I'm guessing Serena was AV. I really didn't ask. 
by the end. But I'm assuming she was AV with like max max speed, max attack. Maybe max HP, max speed. Bring incinerates back in the fucking thread himself. And I'm just like, bro, Talonflame, please. Talonflame is the MVP of this match. Because, bro, that bitch not only saved me from T spikes, the bitch saved me from this hard hitting ass incinerates. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. T flame is the goat. T flame is the fucking goat. Uh, I think here I'm expecting High Dragon to come in at this point, and I'm just like, don't do it. I'm gonna just roost up. I'm looking at his pyro balls. He got three left, and and what I'm saying in my head is, once he wastes those three, Goldingo goes crazy. Goldingo can bring this game back if he wastes all his pyro balls, right? And Dark Rai, Dark Rai can definitely win this game with uh, Ice Beam against uh, High Dragon because it's Scarf. Right. In my head, I'm just like, Dark Rai is too fucking bulky to get nuked by one Draco and it's Scarf locked. So he would have to do that and then outspeed me with Talonflame. And I'm pretty sure he's not outspeeding my Talonflame in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Dark Post. So I won't get flinched and I'll be able to beat that at the end game. That's what I was thinking in my head. Uh, Gold Dingo was kind of like a maybe <laughs> a 50 50 play, but this right here told me everything I need to know. This 45% damage was like Gold Dingo could win this game. Go Gold Dingo at this point could win this game. So that situation with him not T bolting, ah, uh, shit, that's my boys. That situation right here, not T bolting with Clef on the Gold Dingo switch in was game changing, like game changing. So I was just like, I have to make the play at this point into Dark Ride because he he's clearly gonna go for Dark Pulse here, and Talonflame is not gonna be able to eat that Dark Pulse. I need Talonflame healthy for these last two Power Balls, and uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I got into Dark Ride. Pretty sure I don't even risk it because he's Scarf, and I'm like, I don't think I outspeed High Dragon with Goldingo at this point. <laughs> Two hundred four to three. How much is it with one point five? I don't know. I'm not I'm not amazed at the math. 325 times 1.5. I have no clue. Y'all can let me know in the comments. I'm not a math guru. Anyways, but yeah, the play was dark ride. I'm pretty sure nine times out of ten my play was dark ride. I might have calced it first to see Draco. Did I count Draco first? I think I count Draco and it did like 90%. I think I went scarf. Yeah, scarf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 80 to 94%, and I think I died next to Poison, maybe? But I doubt it. I really, really doubted that he went for that. <sighs> but, yeah. At this point, I realize that I'm in range of... Uh, I'm in range of the uh, dark uh, Draco Meteor. I'm like, I have to nuke him here. He goes out in the cleft. Um, I couldn't, I think I easily just made the switch into, uh, Godingo. I wanted to stay in. I think I wanted to stay in in Dark Pulse, because he only has T-Bolt. But I don't need Dark Rider to get low, because I need Dark Rider to eat a Dark Pulse if it gets down to that situation, you know? Um, and I keep my Godingo, because at this point, Godingo and Capri Sun is basically my win condition. I mean, I said go ding on Capri Sun. Capri Sun and T-Flame are my winked. I need a nickname from Talonflame, bro. What is a good nickname for that nigga? I don't know. Uh, anyways, this this also was another moment where I realized that I probably win this game. Um, this is kind of when I was like, yeah, this game's on my side. I go for Psy Shock here. And I was just like, this is the better play. He does that. I'm just like, okay, cool, nice, neat damage. And I tried to T-wave this Clefable. He tried to Uncore me, but good as gold is immune to that. And yeah, from this moment, I can spam Hex. I think he goes back out in the Cloud's Eye um, late game. Late game is kind of where Zach starts uh, struggling the most. I, I think he played a strong start game, beginning game. He was going strong. But when I seen the damage on this too, 53% to a Cloud's Eye is crazy. That, that's crazy. I was like, yeah, yeah, this might be game. Um, and then he brings Incinerate skin. I'm just like, ah, oh, this bitch. <laughs> uh, I bring in T-Flame. I think I just roost up to try to waste. He has one more Pyro Ball. 
he did have two and i'm just like yeah he can bring in high dragon try to surf me is which is what i'm expecting him to do bring a high dragon and probably surf surf and he ran out of power balls on that last one right he ran out of power balls did that say zero i think here i was trying to determine should i risk it and just go straight out into my um dark rat or go out in the capri sun and expect him to go for surf the surf is like the, the best neutral play here I think I, yeah, I, so I stayed in, was just like, fuck it. Let's see what he locks himself into. He locks himself into Draco. I'm pretty sure I'm faster with Talonflame and I can roost that shit off. Um, at this point, I'm just like, yo, this bro can't do shit to me. I probably should have T-Wave, but I was trying to scout for his last move because I had no clue what it was. That very last move was huge and I was expecting it to be sucker. And I wanted to, I wanted to T-Wave, but I was like, nah, I'm going to switch out because it might be some crazy shit. Who knows, like a secondary uh, fire, fire type move, like blaze kick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, I'm not even going to risk it, bro. I, I switched out. Um, Clef comes back in. I go back in the Capri Sun. Now we're just going to hex again and just start nuking shit and win this game. Uh, hex, that that destroyed Clef. Uh, I think High Dragon comes in and I'm like, I live one Dark Pulse. A little one dark pulse, so I'm just like I, I can easily just go for the dark pulse here. I mean, I said dark pulse. I can I can go for the hex here. I easily just go for the hex here, and maybe he flinches me. Maybe he doesn't. He Draco though. He Draco expected me to switch. I think that was his downfall here. And uh, yeah, I I can just recover that shit off, and basically win this game with Goldingo, who I think is my current kill leader. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think he is. I think last game he dropped like three, four kills, three or four. I think three. I think three kills. And then this week he dropped Clef, Clodzar. Did he kill Serena? I think uh Cinerace. Clef, Clodzar, Cinerace, and High Dragon. I'm pretty sure he kills High Dragon at the end too. Uh did he kill Serena, y'all? I forgot. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check after this after I get this last kill. But I think he's like he's either like uh seven or eight. Seven or eight. Depending on if he killed or not. Cause he would have killed five. If he killed five members, that's crazy. I know he for sure killed four, but I don't remember if he killed five. I, let's see. Let's see real quick. Serena's still alive, Serena's still alive, Serena's still alive, Serena's still alive, Serena's still alive. Who the fuck did I kill Serena with? Oh, I did kill Serena with... Oh, yeah, he got a five-piece. Okay, gold? My boy got a five-piece? Oh, my God. Well, good shit, my nigga. That was, that was amazing. Anyway, Carissa <laughs> over here putting in that work, y'all, you know. New season, new gold dingo, just greatness in the making. Anyways, with that being said, I appreciate y'all watching. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, whatever y'all got to do down there in the comments below. Please let me know what y'all think. And yeah, with that being said, I'm going to get up out.